Once upon a time there lived a beautiful princess named Snow White. She was a kind and caring person that was a friend to all animals. She had hair as dark as ebony and skin as white as snow and was admired by many. One day Snow White met the love of her life, a charming prince, and together they sang a song of love while a disapproving queen watched from the distance. The queen, filled with jealousy and anger, ordered her huntsmen to go and kill the beautiful princess in the woods. The huntsman led Snow White into the woods, but in the end could not bring himself to kill her. He told her to run far, far away, to a place where the queen could not find her. A frightened Snow White quickly ran off far into the woods until she came across a sleepy cottage. Inside the cottage, she found seven charming dwarves who allowed her to live with them until she could find a more permanent escape from the queen. Throughout the day, Snow White tried her best to cook and clean for the dwarves in order to thank them for letting her live with them. Unfortunately, having to cook and clean and also worry about being found by the queen caused a lot of stress for Snow White. Snow White began pulling and picking at the hair on her head, on in her eyebrows, and in her eyelashes. She quickly lost large amounts of her hair and often felt stress or tension when resisting to pull her hair. Having to pull her hair out became a necessity in which she felt pleasure or gratification from <clears throat> when she did so. The seven dwarves noticed um, Snow White's hair loss and strange actions. A concerned Sleepy provided a wig for Snow White, whereas Doc went to the library to do some research about uh, Snow White's symptoms. In the end, he ended up diagnosing her with trichotillomania, and he also noticed that the queen may have also had trichotillomania, and uh, Snow White might have been genetically predisposed into having this disorder due to the fact that the queen always wore her hood and never showed her hair, so she could also be struggling with this disorder. It wasn't long until the queen found out that Snow White was still alive. She dressed up as an old hag and brought poisonous apples to the cottage of the dwarves and with intentions of killing Snow White. Snow White took a bite of the apple and fell into a death-like sleep. The dwarves surrounded her, not knowing what to do or how to help her. As the dwarves sat there crying and helpless, the prince came along. The prince told the dwarves how he had been searching for Snow White for days and that he knew he was destined to be with her. The dwarves informed the prince on what had happened and also about Snow White's disorder. But the prince quickly told them that no amount of hair loss would put a stop to his love for Snow White. The prince awakened Snow White with true love's kiss and once Snow White was conscious, he told her that he was actually a psychiatrist who could prescribe Prozac or Luvox or Zoloft for her and for her trichotillomania and other OCD issues she might have. He also told her that he could set her up with a cognitive behavioral therapist colleague friend of his um, that could help her learn a structured method of keeping track of the symptoms and associated behaviors and to so that she can become aware of the pulling of her hair and substitute it with a better behavior or reverse the pulling behavior all on its own. A year later, Snow White's hair had completely grown back in time for the wedding. She continued to see her therapist and she continued to take medication until she no longer needed them. Still, in stressful situations, she did have a tendency to begin pulling out her hair again, but the prince was always there to comfort her and to help her with whatever she may need. After the wedding that all the dwarves attended, Snow White and the prince went on a lovely honeymoon, and they all lived happily ever after.